the benefit of having so many wonderful people to join us. Thank you all for coming today. We really appreciate it. My name is Maureen Schutte. I'm an associate judge in the Third Judicial Circuit. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come today. Um, anybody that like to sit, we have a lot of seats here available. And the other thing we just ask is they're live streaming. If you just don't stand in front of the camera, uh, our tech has asked that you not stand in front of the camera today. So thank you so much. Child Abuse Prevention Month has been observed each April since its first presidential proclamation in 1983. Since that time, millions of Americans have participated in this national campaign. Individuals, organizations, and committees across the United States plant pinwheels. We also tie ribbons, organize trainings, and host fundraisers and other activities to celebrate healthy, happy childhoods. And we raise awareness that all children deserve to grow up in nurturing and safe homes. At this time, I would like to recognize a few people that are here today. We appreciate you all for coming. First, I would like to recognize our Chief Judge, Stephen Stobbs. Thank you, our incredible Chief. He's going to be speaking today. Thank you for coming. I'd also like to recognize our Circuit Judge that runs our Family Division. A lot of judges. Our Circuit Judge, Amy Scholler, is here. Thank you for coming. We also have several associate judges here who have stepped out of their busy dockets to come, and I thank you for coming. We have Andy Carruthers here. Thank you for coming, Judge. And also Judge Veronica Armudi is here. Thank you, Judge Armudi, for coming. Did I miss any other judges? I'm sorry if I did. Ah, Judge Emily Nielsen is here. Thank you, Judge, for coming. I know you're busy, too. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize some other people here. Our chairman of the board, uh, Kurt Prenzler, is here. He's going to be reading our proclamation today. Thank you for coming. We have Tom McRae here, our circuit clerk. Thank you. We have Jeff, Jeff Connor, our sheriff, is here. Thank you for coming. We have Steve Nunn, our coroner, here. Thank you for coming, Steve. We also have Kerry Cohen, who's going to be speaking, our exec executive director of the Child Advocacy Center. Thanks, Kerry. Aaron Bickle, our executive director of Refuge, is here. Thanks for coming, Aaron. Thank you. And also Julie Chambers, our executive director of Children's First, is here. Thank you for coming. Is there anybody, any of our... Anybody else that I've missed? If so, please, please raise your hand and step forward because I do want to recognize you and I do appreciate you coming today. Is there anybody else? Thank you so much, all of you, for coming. I know that our Madison County Courthouse Do A Dog Fitz is here somewhere, so thank you to our trainers for bringing him today. Appreciate it. Um, at this time, I would uh, like to ask Chairman Prenzler to step forward and read our proclamation. Thank you, Chairman. This is a proclamation of the County of Madison, Illinois, Child Abuse Awareness Month. Whereas child abuse prevention is a community responsibility, in finding solutions depends on involvement among all people, and whereas communities must make every effort to promote programs that benefit their children and families, and whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among agencies, schools, religious organizations, law enforcement, and the business community. And whereas everyone in the community should become more aware of child abuse prevention and consider helping parents raise their children in a safe, nurturing environment, and now therefore be it resolved that I, Kurt Prenzler, Chairman of the Board of Madison, of Madison County, do hereby proclaim April to be Child Abuse Prevention Month and urge all citizens to work together to help reduce Child Abuse and Neglect adopted this 31st day of March 2023. Thank you. Thank you so much. We very much appreciate it. We have several speakers here today, and I, I have the honor of introducing them. Um, the first one today is Tara Winters. Tara is Director of Programs with Prevent Child Abuse, Illinois. Tara, please step forward, please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We come together today to announce and recognize April's Child Abuse Prevention Month. 
As Judge Judy had mentioned, across the country, thousands of individuals and organizations will be holding press conferences, sponsoring community events, hosting family activities, tying ribbons, planting pinwheels, and using the color blue to raise awareness about this very important issue. And I see a lot of blue um, looking out there. Friday, April 7th is Wear Blue Day, and we encourage everyone to wear blue and share pictures with us on social media. And also, um, on the agenda, as they are sitting over there, I wanted to mention that there is a QR code on the agenda, and so we have created a virtual folder. If you wanted to go on there and look at some Child Abuse Prevention Month um, resources, just scan that QR code, and it'll take you directly to that site. Child abuse and neglect is one of the greatest tragedies of our time, with far-reaching consequences for the youngest and most vulnerable members of society. This year's theme, Building Together, Prevention and Partnership, calls us to action to build strong communities, build strong families, and raise strong, happy, and healthy children. Every strong community needs an active group of citizens to advocate for its members. Every parent needs a strong support system to give them stability when times get tough and to celebrate them when times are good. And every child needs a strong, caring adult in their life who's looking out for them. Usually when you ask one of us who are organizing an event such as today, why are you wearing blue, or what does the pinwheel stand for? We usually say things like to raise awareness or to educate people about child abuse and neglect, and that's all true. We need to raise awareness that child abuse, including child sexual abuse and neglect, happens in every community. It happens in our schools, in our places of worship, in youth groups, clubs and sports programs, and among our family and friends. We need to talk about how it happens, who's at risk, and who's doing the abusing. We need to educate adults that it is our responsibility to protect children. Awareness and education are extremely important, but it's not enough. It's not enough to know about the prevalence of child abuse and neglect and its consequences. We also need to understand the kinds of efforts that will prevent it from happening in the first place and take action. We can create positive experiences for children, build protective factors that strengthen families, advocate for and promote programs that put children and child safety first, such as home visiting, early intervention, preschool and after school programs, and make certain that families have the resources they need when they need them. And if you're not sure how to put these, those ideas into action, or if the issue of child abuse seems too overwhelming to do anything about, I want to suggest this. Take action by being a stable, caring, and consistent adult in a child's life. Show up in their life. Let them know that you love them and care about them. The most crucial protective factor for a child is that they have at least one adult in their life that cares about them, that helps guide them, and shows up for them. It can be anyone, a teacher, a grandma, a coach, a minister, a friend, an uncle, it could be you. We at Prevent Child Abuse Illinois are so grateful for our partners and for everyone working to prevent child abuse and neglect. DCFS, home visiting programs, counseling services, child advocacy centers, crisis nurseries, law enforcement, schools, faith-based organizations, and so many more are all on the front lines supporting families and providing safe places for children. When we work together and support each other's work, we can build those strong communities that have jobs, that have good jobs, safe environments, and ample resources for families. When we work together, we can build those strong families that put the welfare of their children first and can reach out for help when they need it. And when we work together, we can prioritize the health and well-being of every child. This is why prevention and partnership is so important. We have long said that everyone has a role to play in preventing child abuse and neglect and keeping children safe, and that's true. It is the responsibility of every adult to make sure the children in their family, in their work, and in their neighborhood are safe. But we are also part of a bigger community, a partnership that is working together to build happy, healthy childhoods for all children and prevent child abuse. We all have a vested interest in ensuring that other children, not just our own, grow up in an environment where they feel safe, important, and loved. All children deserve great childhoods, and we all have a role to play in keeping them safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tara, for all that you do. Our next speaker is Maria Miller. Maria is Deputy Director of Child Protection for the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. Maria, if you will step forward, please. Thank you.
Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with all of you today. On behalf of DCFS, I would like to thank Prevent Child Abuse Illinois, the Third Judicial Circuit, Violence Prevention Council, our private agency partners, community leaders, including my colleagues at DCFS for all the work that you do for Illinois children and families. I also want to thank Governor Pritzker and the General Assembly for the funding they provide that directly benefits child abuse prevention programs. Oftentimes when we hear about DCFS, it's in a negative connotation because a piece of a story is told that becomes sensationalized. But what people do not get a chance to see is the 3,000 champions, also known as employees, who work tirelessly and unwavering in their commitment to provide the best possible service, care, and resource they can to the 153,356 child victims investigated during last fiscal year alone. These are the same champions who may drive an extra 45 miles to do an, initial, an additional check on a child because it's the right thing to do. It's the same champion who make sure that children's homes are stocked with food and other concrete su supports that they need, that a new mother is given a pack and play because she can't afford a crib, and that there are Christmas presents to open on December 25th. At our core, DCFS is an agency made up of people who put their heart and soul into the work because we are tasked with the most important job in the world, ensuring the health and safety of the children that are brought to our attention. We take the job very seriously. It's not a nine to five, as we all know. This is what makes Illinois DCFS so special. Our leadership has empowered us to innovate and collaborate simultaneously while strengthening families. We have enhanced our human trafficking programs, expanded our intact services working to keep families together whenever it's safe for the children without the need for protective custody by providing families with needed in-home services including counseling, domestic violence prevention, substance abuse treatment, mental health treatment, parenting, coaching, classes, and housing. We've expanded our Norman funds so that a child is not delayed in returning home because a family cannot afford an, a new bed or they're behind on their utilities, on and on. We continue to educate whenever we can, however we can, and as often as we can about topics like preventing child abuse, the connection between substance abuse and child abuse the connection between family violence and child abuse, providing treatment, classes, and other resources. I could go on, but instead what I want to say is we need you. One in every five children will be abused or neglected before they turn 18. No child deserves this kind of trauma. I'm sure we all agree, prevention strategies are best when built together in partnership. We owe it to our children to provide them with a safe, secure, and loving environment in which they can grow and thrive. Thank you for the opportunity to join today. Um, please remember, as Tara said, to wear blue on Friday, um, April 7th, in support of National Wear Blue Day to bring awareness to child abuse prevention efforts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. We appreciate you. Uh, our next speaker is Carrie Cohen. Carrie is Executive Director of the Madison County Child Advocacy Center. Carrie? Good morning, everyone. I love this theme building together prevention and partnership. 20 years ago, then Assistant State's Attorney uh, Kyle Knapp, who is now the Honorable Judge Knapp, and then State's Attorney Bill Hain who later became Senator Hain and left many legacies in our community and people's lives while he was here on earth. And many other people came together to build something different for the kids in Madison County. That was our Child Advocacy Center. We are 20 years old this year. And for 20 years, we have been partnering and building together as a team to do better for kids and to serve our child victims of sexual abuse and severe physical abuse together with our partners in law enforcement, 
our partners from the Department of Children and Family Services, our partners in medical and mental health, our partners in prosecution, and our Child Advocacy Center piece, all working together. We've trained together, we've learned together, we've messed up together, we've challenged and celebrated together, and together we've built this amazing multidisciplinary team. And we choose to open our eyes because, and grow and learn together because when we know better, we do better, and we must do better for kids every day. Our core services at the Child Advocacy Center involve coordinating that multidisciplinary team that investigates cases of child sexual abuse and severe physical abuse. We have staff who provide the forensic interviews of kids related to those allegations so that our law enforcement and child protection partners can get what they need for their investigations. We have case managers who meet with the families to meet them right where they are when they show up at our doors in the middle of an abuse allegation, scared, confused, hurting, and they connect them and support them to whatever they need to be successful and to move forward in healing. We have therapy on site at our center, which was something we added about five years ago. Our kids now have a better chance at hope and healing through the power of mental health trauma-informed services that they receive from our therapy department. Um, the children's display that you see here represents the 518 kids that we interviewed at the Child Advocacy Center last year in 2022. And all of our team partners, many of them are standing in the room today, uh, helped serve all of those kids. And we're so proud to be able to be there and work together on their behalf. Today is about prevention though. And back in 2019, we dipped our toes for the first time into doing child sexual abuse prevention education in the schools. Aaron's law requires schools to provide sexual abuse prevention education for grades K, K through 12 um, in the schools. And back then, the Bethalto School District stepped up and said, hey, can you do this for us? And it's something that we all thought we should do because we're experts in child sexual abuse. And the amazing thing is that today, our case managers and forensic interviewers, the same ones who work with the kids and families after abuse have happened, are able to go out to our local schools and train kids on how to keep themselves safe, what healthy boundaries look like, who in their life they can go to when they need help. And they get to be on the other side of abuse, preventing it and, and helping uh, teach kids and our schools better ways to respond to child sexual abuse. Um, and we're so grateful for that. Um, related to that prevention of child sexual abuse, I want to take a few minutes to just review some things that everyday people can do to help prevent child sexual abuse in our community. Use proper names for private parts. When you talk to your kids, you identify the nose and the ears and the hands. Identify the private parts for their actual names as well. Allow kids the space to be able to talk freely about their bodies. Let them know that no one should do anything to their private parts. Nothing should be happening to their private parts and no one should make them do something to someone else's private parts. Help kids set healthy boundaries. Kids are taught almost universally that you must listen to, respect, do what adults tell you. Kids need adults to help them know that they can set boundaries about their own bodies and that adults will respect that. So when grandma's leaving after a visit and says, come give grandma a hug and a kiss, and the child doesn't want to, as a parent, you can say, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You could give a, a fist bump or a high five. You can just say, see you later. I'll see you next time you're over. Kids have a right to set ba boundaries for their bodies, and we as adults can help them set them. Teach kids that no means no, and stop means stop every single time. When you are playing with your kids and you're tickling and everybody's having fun and then all of a sudden your kid's out of breath and they don't like it anymore and they say stop, you stop every single time. And you say, I stopped because you told me to. That doesn't mean we can't tickle again later or play again later. It means right now you said stop, so I'm gonna stop. Teach those boundaries. Teach kids the difference between secrets and surprises. Surprises are fun. It's something someone doesn't know about that's going to be joyous for them or something they're going to like when, it's, when they find out later. Secrets are made to exclude someone purposely. 
They're often done to harm someone or to keep information away. And you should tell your kids, if anyone ever says to keep a secret from your mom and dad, you need to go tell them that right away. You shouldn't be asked to keep secrets from your parents or your trusted people in your life. For you as a parent and any person, kids, adults, anyone, trust your gut. Your inner voice is yours and it's your safety mechanism. It's the thing that says, uh-oh, something doesn't feel right. This feels weird. I suddenly feel uncomfortable and I'm not sure why. This suddenly feels icky. It crossed some kind of line. That's your inner voice. That's your gut. It's always, you always need to listen to it. As a parent, if you have a red flag, if your inner voice is saying something's not right here, you need to look into it. And when a kid feels that way, they need to go find their trusted adult and tell them about it and help them work through it. And speaking of trusted adults, help your kids know who their trusted adults are in their life. Who's the people that they can turn to when they need help? And there should always be someone that's not in their home, someone that's not in their family that can be added to their trusted adults. Teach them to use their voice. We all must use our voices. It's yours. You can use it loud and proud, and you can use it soft if you need to. You can shout no and get away. You can softly go ask for help for someone that you know can help you. Use your voice. Stand up for yourself and for others when you need to. We also teach kids in our kindergarten and first grade programs to use their I mean business voice. When you mean business, use it. That's the voice parents use all the time with their kids when they're telling them not to do something. Kids can be taught to use their I mean business voice too. Respect people's privacy. If kids want to close the door and use the bathroom in private or change clothes or just take some space, let that be something that's allowed. Have privacy. We all must pay attention to technology. Technology is involved in everything these days. As a parent and as a person who cares about kids, you have to monitor technology. You have to be aware of what they're doing. And just like in the real world, if anything that they're doing online feels icky, confusing, makes them scared, or gives them that gut feeling, they need to reach out and ask for help. Even if they think they've done something wrong, they need to reach out and ask for help. Practice what-if scenarios. What if somebody comes up to you at school and says, uh, I want you to go do this with me, what would you do? What if somebody said, don't tell your mom this, but... What if somebody said, you're going to be in trouble if you tell someone this? Talk to your kids about what-if scenarios. Give them a path for what to do next. And most importantly, just create space for kids to have a safe place to land. A safe place where they can be listened to, heard, believed, understood, championed. That's what we all need in our lives in some fashion. Kids depend on us as adults to do that. I want to switch gears to a different kind of prevention for just a second because I also have the privilege to serve on the board of directors for the Southern Illinois Child Death Investigation Task Force. It's a long name. It's an amazing group of men and women, primarily from DCFS and law enforcement, who work together to ensure that every county in Southern Illinois has access to qualified, expert, trained, people who can come in and assist in investigations of child death cases. I want you to know a statistic from that. 40% of the cases that our task force investigates are related to unsafe sleep. 40% are related to unsafe sleep. So I'm going to review some safe sleep tips here real quick. The ABCs of sleep. Kids should be sleeping alone in a crib, alone, A, alone. No blankets, no pillows, no stuffies, no cushions, no animals, no humans, alone. They should be on their backs, B, backs. And they should be in a crib or in a safe space. There are lots of resources available. You can use a pack and play as long as it's got a firm sheet and no extra things. You can use a dresser drawer. If you, put, if you can lay a baby in a dresser drawer, if you have to, they need a safe place where they can sleep alone. 
We could remove 40% of our investigations for child death cases by ensuring that kids have a safe place to sleep. The other thing that our community is unfortunately dealing with right now is that kids can be fatally injured by the acts of adults. So I just, in a time when everyone is suffering from mental health concerns, when the stress level of our community is probably higher than it's ever been, reach out and get help. If you, and I will tell you as, as a parent myself, there isn't a single person who is a parent who hasn't experienced the moment when they're super frustrated and they're tired and they just can't do it anymore and you just wanna go like this, set the baby down. Never, never, never shake a baby. Set them down in a safe place, maybe the same place that you let them sleep because you're gonna do that too, and walk away for a couple minutes, take a couple deep breaths and reach out for help. Give our babies safe places to sleep and never, never, never shake a baby. That will save lives. And those two things are really important to me and kind of different angles of things that I work with um, that I wanted to share. So as I close out, I just wanna bring us back to this year's theme, building together prevention and partnership. As I look around this room, I have <clears throat> my friends from CASA, Refuge, Oasis, Mental Health Board, law enforcement, coroner's office, Department of Children and Family Services, the CAC staff back there, I see you, our prosecutors and judges that are in the room, our community partners. There are so many people here. This truly is building together. We're building together a better community and we are working in partnership to prevent child abuse. We're working in partnership to ensure that our kids have a safe and healthy place to, to live, grow, love, thrive, play. That's what we're doing together. So thank you all for the pieces that you bring to the table. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carrie. We appreciate all that you do. And last but not least of our speakers, our incredible chief, Stephen Stobbs. Well, thanks, uh, Judge Shooty. This is a great organization, and all the people that are here today, I want to just thank uh, each and every one of you on behalf of the circuit court. That's all of our judges, associate judges, and court staff. Thank each and every one of you for what you're doing every day to help prevent child abuse. I know that uh, the judges that are here today and those that aren't um, deal with these cases. They're very difficult cases, and if you've ever had one, I mean, sorting out the facts and getting to the truth, which is, of course, what we're supposed to do, is very challenging in these cases. So the organizations that are here today, and in particular the CAC, over the years has done a wonderful job helping us make informed decisions and uh, come up with uh, the judgments that we need to in order to address these cases. So uh, thanks to each and every one of you for what you're doing. You've, uh, Carrie, dated me a little bit in 2002. I was here and I was on the county board and voted in favor of the organization and proud that we were able to uh, start that initiative and launch what's been you know, just a tremendous asset to the uh, judicial system and of course in helping kids. So thanks uh, for, for coming and I will be brief as you've heard a lot of different speeches today, but again, thank you and uh, look forward to a wonderful month for child uh, abuse prevention. Thank you so much, Chief. We appreciate all you do for us. I just want to make sure to remind you to look around at those silhouettes. Each of those silhouettes represents a boy or a girl interviewed at the CAC. Last year, there were 518 of them. That was up 32 from the prior year. As you look around and you see the pinwheels, these are the symbol of Child Abuse Prevention Month. And finally, if you see those white t-shirts over there, the t-shirts are from the Oasis Women's Center Clothesline Project. The shirts are created by the kiddos and women as part of their art therapy to deal with abuse to themselves or to others. They're very moving. Take a look at those. In closing, I just want to thank all of you for being here today. We're a team. As a team, we'll continue to work together to protect our greatest asset, which is our children. Thank you all for all that you do. Remember to wear blue on April 7th. Thanks again.